on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hey, good evening, everybody. Rory Johnston with you here on News Channel 5 Plus, sitting in for Ben Hall tonight on Open Line. And uh, we've got a good topic tonight. We hope to hear from you whenever we bring up uh, the word guns. Right away, people perk up and uh, they have strong opinions. But tonight we're talking about something really unique. And you've heard this in the news recently, and that is the idea of being able to actually make, produce your own gun in your own home using a 3D printer. There's been a lot of controversy about this recently in the news because one of the uh, main manufacturers, uh, a company in Austin, Texas, wanted to release basically the recipe or the blueprint for uh, making your own gun at home online. Uh, judges stepped in, states stepped in and said, hold on a moment. Uh, even President Trump said he was looking into this. And uh, one of our state representatives has, has uh, pretty serious concerns about this and uh, we welcome him tonight and that is G.A. Hardaway from the 93rd District. Is that right, sir, out of That's Memphis? Correct. Good to see the you. Thank you for coming 93rd on. 93rd House District. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. we, we appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Hardaway uh, is also a member of the Insurance and Banking Civil Justice Committees. He is a member of the Democratic Caucus in the House and the Black Caucus of the State Legislature. Um, you sent a letter to uh, the State Attorney General, Herbert Slattery last month, along with uh, Sarah Kyle, who also represents uh, uh, Senator the, Kyle, I should correct. say. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about that letter and why you sent it. Well, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, there was the, uh, the chance at the reversal of the initial decision uh, to ban the blueprints from being, uh, the blueprints being for the uh, 3D printing of uh, guns, firearms, uh, that we wanted to make sure that the original decision that the State Department and, and the rest of law enforcement uh, had supported, the decision not to do that uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, they looked at it as, a, uh, as literally unconscionable because it unleashed unlimited, unregulated weaponry into the public and you can't control who gets it so we have no way to uh, to enforce existing regulations on who should or should not have firearms whether you're a convicted felon whether you're a domestic violence uh, offender mm -hmm. uh, we would have no way of keeping that weapon out of the hands of those who should not have them. So we asked our Attorney General to join with the other states at that time, uh, it was less than a dozen now, it's, it's probably 22, More 23, that, yeah. uh, who have uh, decided to join the lawsuit. But the fact is that we can't unring that bell. Uh, it seems that the, uh, the company decided that they uh, considered the fact that, hey, we have an agreement with the Trump administration, uh, so if we release a little something early or through a back, uh, back uh, door, uh, there's not going to be any problem because we have an agreement done. So the information went out anyway. It just did not go out officially. So we're, we're dealing with uh, downloads in the hundreds and thousands now of that blueprint of how to print a weapon using a 3D printer. How do you respond to critics who say, you know, this is a both a Second Amendment right, it's a First Amendment right, um, there are too many restrictions in some local communities where um, people cannot gain access to firearms to protect themselves, and also the, the argument that these 3D printers are just not generally accessible, that they're thousands of dollars, so no one's going to be able to get a hold of one in their home and, and actually make a gun. Well, I'll start with the last one first okay. about technology. I had one of the early um, cell phones, uh, about as big as a shoebox. I remember. And, uh, you know, you had to plug it in and charge it, and uh, it, it was a combination of communication device and a weapon uh, if you needed it. And now we have more power in this tiny cell phone than the computer that sent a man to the moon. 
So in terms of the technology aspect, we already have 3D printers available to the public for a couple of hundred dollars. Now the more expensive uh, printers are ranging in five, six uh, thousand, but as that technology, uh, especially when China gets hold of it, uh, becomes uh, uh, more uh, pervasive, more refined, the price will come down. You'll have one in every house. Some uh, vendors now are starting to shape their future uh, marketing towards uh, not delivering uh, goods and services uh, to your house, but delivering the proprietary information over your 3D printer. Mm -hmm. So that's the way you'll start receiving right. things just in style. But uh, that's why the technology argument doesn't make sense. Sure. The technology is available to any and everyone. Now the, uh, the constitutional issue uh, seems to be more of the Tenth Amendment where the state has the right to regulate these firearms. Now that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's standing uh, uh, legal theory. And that's a violation that we uh, assert that the, uh, the agreement by the federal government that would allow the release of this uh, information would violate. Um, have you received how much support? And, and let me just add, the, the First Amendment rights, Second Amendment rights, no other constitutional rights are being uh, violated because the only thing that we're talking about is placing this weaponry under the, the uh, same type of regulations that we already have in place. So we are, we're not digging up anything new. We're just saying that it's a weapon. We need to define it as a weapon. We have some techies that look at it as, as a, some kind of Pokemon uh, uh, gizmo, but it's a weapon. It can yeah. kill people, including the individual who makes it and tries to fire it because the technology is not perfected. Is this a, a, an issue that falls on a down political lines, have you? What kind of support have you received from your colleagues in the legislature? Well, we're not ready with a bill yet. Right. Uh, first, we've got to figure out what the issue is. Is the issue that this needs to be clarified in code, state code, that a 3D printer can create a weapon. So is it a weapon? Is it a firearm? Is it a gun? Uh, we have all that defined in state statute. Uh, we have federal code, which gives us a definition of what a, uh, a gun or a firearm mm -hmm. is. So we've got to go back and make sure that it fits, that no matter uh, what uh, the, if we don't determine that it is a weapon, is a uh, firearm, then none of what we're talking about would matter because it would be in a different right. category. So you're, here you're talking here, Representative, on two different levels. One is not only, we, we've got to block the mass release of these blueprints, which basically guide people how, how to produce this a gun, but also, and we're looking at some file video here of what one of those uh, guns looks like, made out of a, a, a very durable plastic material, which a lot of these 3D printers um, produce and, and use. So not only the blocking the release of the, the blueprints, which the states have now filed this lawsuit against this company, um, and the company's name is Defense Distributed, by the way, run by the founder is Cody Wilson. But also the 3D printer itself, if it is capable of producing a weapon, are you saying we need to regulate the actual printer? Uh, absolutely not. No. Okay. I think, uh, or just who, who can have access well, no. to both together, the, the blueprint and a 3D printer together, then you can make a gun anywhere you want. And um, it's, exactly. it's going to be untraceable. So it's more the blueprint, it's the proprietary information mm -hmm. that this company is, is starting uh, to release, and uh, it's it's pervasive now. Yeah. I'm not silly enough to think that we can unring that bail. Yeah, and you we wrote know this. We know that it's, it's going to happen. In, in, uh, in your letter, I'm going to read one of the lines. Once this information is uploaded online, mm -hmm. the weapons proliferation will be permanent and irreversible on the Internet. You cannot unring that bell. Can I ring that bell? Have you gotten a response at all from uh, the Attorney General's office? Uh, we have gotten uh, verbal uh, communications okay. and um, 
I prefer to wait until we actually have it in writing. So uh, I, I don't want to get into that right yeah, now. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that, we're going to take uh, our first uh, quick break as we continue this discussion, everybody. I know some phone calls are coming in. 737 plus is the phone number. We want to hear from you. We'll continue with Open Line and your phone calls right after this.